Today, we'll be hanging out with Harry from Bald Cafe, who has recently hit over 100,000 subscribers on his channel. He's going to be sharing some wisdom with us so that you can pick an awesome niche for your channel and thrive. But before we dive into that, I have a secret that I need to share with you guys that I've kind of been holding on to for a few weeks. I did something crazy. I shaved my head. All right, welcome back to the channel. As mentioned before, I shaved my head. Man, that feels good to share. <laughs> For the past two years or so, I've been dealing with hair loss, which honestly has made me feel a little bit insecure and not super confident. You'll notice pretty much every video, I'm wearing a hat. Well, that's why. I also do really like hats, like they're dope, but I don't wanna have to rely on them. This is pretty crazy. It's actually pretty cool to share this with you guys, and that kind of brings me to today's guest. While I was going through this journey, I was looking on YouTube for different resources, and that's when I stumbled upon Harry's channel, Bald Cafe. It was really cool because he was sharing his journey as well as bringing others on to share theirs as well. He really is creating a community by adding value to the viewers with resources, information, and encouragement. I instantly got a ton of value, subscribed, and became a fan, and it's super cool to have him here on the video today. I thought it'd be really cool to sit down and talk about his YouTube journey and see what tips and strategy he could share with you. Here's our conversation. One of the first things I kind of wanted to ask you about really was like, what got you into YouTube to begin with? When I actually moved overseas, I moved to China in 2014, I moved there. I made a few videos while I was out there and I wanted to kind of do the whole vlogging thing, right? It never really went anywhere because it just wasn't me. You know, just it just wasn't me. I definitely loved making videos. I just didn't find what I liked making videos about. That idea kind of ended and a couple of years later, I had this random idea that I wanted to start a YouTube channel where it was like, um, I would learn something. Again, kind of in the fitness theme, I was trying to learn how to walk on my hat, like do a handstand and walk on my hands, right? Document my progress and that's gonna be an awesome video. And then I had all these like um, ideas of loads of different things I could learn. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm, I've got videos for years here. Like I'll just learn a different thing and that will inspire people and that'll be really cool. And I wasn't in love with learning how to walk on my hands. Like it just, it just, you know, it was once the initial like buzz and the, and the thrill was over, it became a chore and I fell off, you know? Then my hair fell out, started to falling at, fall out, you know? And that was a really like personal, like ex, like really impactful experience that, that I was going through, right? That I, that I had direct, that I really dealt with, you know? I got the idea to share my story actually on my third go at like making YouTube videos. And at this point I'd started to make YouTube videos about apps, right? So I was reviewing all these different apps and there was this app that was all about like Photoshopping yourself, making yourself look more slim or more like defined jawline or make your beard look thicker, make your hair fuller. And then that got me thinking about how I felt when I was losing my hair and this like pressure of like, you need to look a certain way. This app really like angered me. And just in the moment, in the spur of the moment, whilst recording this video for the app, I started to talk about my own experience with, with losing my hair, you know? And I realized that I could really just like, because it was a real experience for me, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't have to like research it. I didn't have to like just make a load of stuff up. Like it was real. And I felt really good sharing it, knowing that, hey, I, I literally went in thinking, if this can help one person out there, then I've done a good job, you know? The interesting thing for, for people who want to make uh, videos on YouTube, right, is I don't regret any of the stuff I tried before this because each time I did it and, and an idea fell off, I got closer to the thing that has, I guess, given me, um, you know, a real space on YouTube. I think it's yeah. cool that you had to like do a little bit of trial and error before you found not only what you were interested in, but also what other people were interested in and that kind of met together and, and not just interested, but like it hits that deeper level of adding value to people, serving people, 
kind of there's more purpose driven content is kind of yeah. like what I call it. When did you first realize that your channel uh, after you shifted to Bald Cafe, when did you first realize that it was starting to kind of take off? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I think before I, I started making videos about, you know, going bold, losing your hair, I didn't really know anything about like, right, how I should title my video or anything like that. Literally the first few videos that I put out got like hundreds more views than anything I'd ever uploaded onto YouTube before. And the fact that people were commenting and asking me questions, I realized, okay, there's something in this. You know, it sparks emotion in people, you know, and reactions and, and they want to kind of learn more and know more and give their opinions and things. So there was room to talk about it and engage about it, you know, in the comment section and, and whatnot. So I sat down and I wrote like 50 video ideas, you know, things I could talk about in like 50 yeah. videos. And each time I would be in the shower, I'd be going for a run, I'd be walking my dog. I would think of more things I could talk about or make videos on or different ways I could create these videos. And, you know, that's more of a way of like me, like recognizing in myself, like, okay, yeah, this is something that I want have, have I want to do and pursue and, and it's got the room to do that, you know, because I was constantly thinking of ideas about it. Whereas before, it was like, I don't know what to film. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to film. I don't know what to show. This is kind of lame. No one's interested, you know? Um, but with this stuff, again, because it was an experience that I'd had, I just had I just had too many ideas, you know? And I, I would even forget about ideas. I'd be like, oh, I had really, I had like two amazing ideas and I didn't write them down or something. And hopefully they'll come to me again, you know? If you're out there looking for your niche, you're looking to figure out, you know, what exactly you should be doing on YouTube. Like if you hit something where you're able to just spit out a bunch of different ideas about it, that's a good indicator for sure. Really look for either something in your life that you've had direct experience with that is like almost like it's been a negative thing or something you've struggled with and something you've overcome share that you know share the ways that you overcame something in your life because you're gonna have the two things like that you're gonna you're gonna actually really know about it and you've got the passion because having overcome whatever it was whatever challenge it was you know you've now got the passion not only in yourself recognizing like wow that was a real journey i've been on there and you feel good about sharing that with people you know if you're going through something or you've been through something you can you can guarantee there are tens of thousands of other people out there in the world who are going to come across the same struggle or are in this moment having the same kind of struggle you know and i think that's a really good good place to start and it, it you know it doesn't need to be all down and, and negative or anything like that you know i use the term struggle but it could be any challenge then challenge let's say try and pinpoint the the one that is most kind of true to you or has been the most impactful like in your life you know great place to start i really think you also don't have to be a master at it. Like you just have to be like this much further along than someone else to help them out. Like you don't have oh, yeah. to be the, the you know, the, the grand master of whatever your topic or niche is because that would instantly unqualify any of us, you know? Yep. But at the end of the day, like as long as you, you have some, some time spent, you have some hours spent, some experience spent. So you know a little bit more than someone who's brand new wanting to dive into it and you can help them. And so I think like if you find yourself in, in that position, then you know, you're in a great spot to make that into a niche. Now that you are approaching, and maybe by the time this video goes out, you're, you will already be at 100,000 yeah. on YouTube. What would be a piece of advice that you would give to someone just starting their journey? Now that I'm about to hit that number, you know, it's great and I want to celebrate that with everyone and the guys that have been on the channel and all the audience and everything, you know, it's going to be a really good moment, but it really isn't the moment that I thought it was going to be, you know, on my desk back in inside, I have a printed out, I printed out a message from someone that you know, a, a guy sent me and it's in a frame and it's been on my desk for, for a good while now since I kind of went full time with this stuff. Just to remind myself, like, you know, that is the plaque, you know, the, the YouTube plaque before the plaque, if, you, if, if that makes sense, you know, that's why I'm really doing it. And that's what really keeps me keeps me going with it. And hopefully there won't be many people thinking this, that it's, it's oh, you're just saying that and things like that. But 
from experience from doing this for three years now, honestly, like all the rewards, I guess, that you could say this has given me by far those messages from people that are like, you know, yes, I love your videos, but like these videos really help me, you know, in whichever way they kind of describe that. But your videos really help me. There's honestly no better feeling and no better reason to to make YouTube videos. And I, I think literally think that 99% of content creators who are doing it for that reason would would completely agree with me there, you know? man it's the audience it's all about the audience like they're the reason it's the viewers the people that are a part of the channel like that's the only reason that it works you know and it's like when trying to find your niche to get a great question to ask is like why why would you subscribe to the channel you know like what is the viewer getting out of it like what is the viewer getting out you know uh receiving from what it is that you're putting out there and um i love that you said that you kind of like commemorated one of the um messages or whatever as like your like this, this is why it's not, it's, it's not because YouTube acknowledges that my content is good. It's because the, my audience is like getting something out of it that is helping them on a deeper level. And I mean, that's that, that talk about your why. I mean, that, that is great to, to kind of have that at the forefront of like, now this is why I'm doing it, you know? And I think that's awesome. Let's talk about some of the resistance that you can hit sometimes while putting you say you go, you go so far as to put your first video out there your first couple videos out there maybe you're kind of finding out your niche and you start running into the haters you start running into some yeah. mean comments um yeah. what would your advice be to uh kind of navigate those waters and kind of deal with that um as a content creator on youtube hate and negativity only comes from unhappy people there's no one on this earth who's completely content and happy with their lives that will feel the need to come and hate on whatever you you are doing and you are trying to put out there when you're actually trying to build something you don't have time to deal with to, to go spread hate on other people's stuff if you can just kind of recognize that that's what it is it helps you kind of either ignore it or respond with a bit of empathy knowing that the person on the other side of that comment is really someone who's struggling with something, you know, and you will find that you'll get like regular people that just literally come just to hate on you. Um, you know, if, if you've tried your best to kind of say like, listen, man, like it's not going to get you any further by, you know, hating on me here. And they're still coming at you with hate. Just get rid of them. You don't need to do, don't need to waste any more time on it and um, navigate it in that way. I think, or just totally ignore it. You know, don't rise to it. That's the worst thing you can do is, is to try and hit back with, with your own kind of slice of hate. It's just not worth your time. Absolutely. I've even had people. Um, I can't think of this specific example anymore. But at one point in time, I had somebody like write a mean, kind of hateful comment. You know, calling me names, whatever. And uh, but there was like a hidden question in there. Uh, about the actual video and so I, I actually just answered their question in kindness and then they responded back and they're like thanks <laughs> it was yeah. like yeah. it's like they were so mean and hateful but then i just responded just still trying to add value to them yeah. and they were at the end of the day it just kind of diffused it and they were just like cool yeah. <laughs> you know it's just like yeah. what but yeah you'll definitely you'll definitely deal with it a lot of times you know people will say like oh you know it's it's kind of an indicator of of progress honestly because it's like yes. you're no it's, you're, you're right yeah. you're ruffling people's feathers and and the reason why is because a lot of times again and again i just find that it's because they themselves want to be doing what it is that you're doing you know yeah. and so just keep yeah. keep on doing it you know keep on yeah 100 uh, pu pushing getting better and you know you'll you'll get past that stuff it, it's always going to exist i think there's just hate in the world and you know sometimes that, that's just going to be one of the factors that unfortunately is with the territory but at the end of the day we always oh, this is interesting because i think we always tend to focus our attention on that one mean comment when right next to it there's 10 positive comments yeah, right it's the worst and, thing yeah. yeah and it's just like man if we could just learn to try as much as we can it's hard but if we can learn to just put as much weight to the good comments and the nice comments then those other ones won't even hardly affect because yeah. a lot of yeah. times it's like a very small ratio don't worry too much about what other people are kind of doing on youtube reflect and think about what videos do you want to make you know so just because you maybe got like a slightly different idea or you know you think it hasn't been done before or you're not sure it was going to take off but you really feel interested in in making videos of a certain type 
or, of, or on a certain subject that you think, oh, who on earth is ever going to be interested about this? I mean, how many viewers does YouTube have? It's like well over a billion now, right? It's like there's an audience out there for everything. Get a piece of paper, write down 50 video ideas, try to make those videos about something that you've had direct experience with. Have that as like the running theme because there will be people that can relate to that. There'll be people that are searching out those answers that you're giving them. Um, they want that sense of relatability to someone else who's going through or has gone through the same thing that they're kind of working through. And then once you have that core theme, you can really start to experiment with throwing in some vlog content in there. Um, maybe sitting down, having a podcast style dialogue with some of these like topics or getting creative with B-roll and stuff like that. Those are all things I've done in loads of my videos, but they always had that same core theme, like running through it. So that's what brings the audience in. And then the other stuff they just kind of enjoy and you can then develop that in all sorts of ways moving forward, you know? Um, I really think that is, that is a good way to get started with it all, yeah. That's absolute gold. That is so good. I love that. You know, especially that idea of all different types of content presentation, but it's about that same uh, niche or that same topic. And there's power in the planning. So write it out, yeah. you know, see what you can kind of come up with and that will help yeah. narrow down, um, you know, those answers for you. There is no final destination with this. You know, if my channel one day happens to reach a million subscribers, that isn't the final destination you know that isn't the bit i look back on and think oh yeah that was that was great i can just i what i do i just stop now you know it just doesn't work like that so enjoy the um enjoy the process and really celebrate those early wins because i'm telling you now like three years in those are the best moments right those are the best moments when you hit those first 100 views go out and celebrate those and enjoy them because those are definitely definitely the best moments Absolutely. I agree with that too. That's, that's super yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's just kind of viewing it as not, not so much like a, a goal that you're trying to achieve, but you're just trying to get into that. It's a, it's really a, a lifestyle in a way, you know, it's kind of like, no, I want to do this for a long time. Like I want to do this, you know, cause I enjoy it. And for as long as I can, cause I find purpose in it and it's fun. And it's like, you know, I think if you can find that and lean into it, then you'll be in a great position to see your channel grow and eventually go full time with it. All right, everybody, that's going to about wrap up this video. I hope that you have enjoyed this and found some value from it. If you want to check out Harry's channel or maybe you want to see what type of gear I use or where I get my music, I've placed a ton of links down in the description as a resource for you. Before you guys leave, make sure to like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and as always, stay creative. Peace.